Hi, it's Professor Gerald Friedman, Department of Economics, University of Massachusetts. And we're here today to talk about the firm, the capitalist firm. Um, now, first thing to note is in orthodox economics, which we call neoclassical economics, uh, which goes back to classical economics with Adam Smith and Karl Marx and people, there are no firms. Adam Smith is all about the division of labor coordinated through the market. You produce something, you want something else, you sell what you produced to buy what you want. There's no firm. He never talks about a firm. Um, he does talk about the social division of labor, where I kill a beaver, trade it with Dan for a deer. He talks about the detailed division of labor, where maybe I kill half the beaver <laughs> and somebody else kills the other half and somebody else skins it. You know, we all do a particular part of it. But there's no firm. There's nobody telling us what to do. Uh, presumably, we coordinate our detailed division of labor. Adam Smith doesn't say this, but, you know, it's, I suppose we would coordinate it by exchange. I'll pay him to help me kill the beaver. We'll together pay the other guy to help us skin it. Markets. Adam Smith and orthodox economists are all about markets. Markets are the way to coordinate the activities of different people. The division of labor leads to productivity and it's coordinated through markets. There are no firms. What is a firm? A firm is an island of command. Within the firm, there are no markets. Technically, we have a firm called the Department of Economics at UMass Amherst. And this firm hired Dan to film me. We could say it hired me. It co commanded me you know, to make this video and teach this course. You know, um, I'm not paying Dan. Um, the department's not paying me. We all do this as a matter of command. Well, technically, the department is paying Dan because he's an outside contractor, so it's maybe not the best example. But um, when the person comes in to clean this room, the janitor comes in at about 6 o'clock, you know, he does things because he's ordered to. He doesn't sit there and say, well, how much is this wastebasket worth to you? <laughs> how much will you pay me to pick up that newspaper and recycle it? You know, to empty this, new s this uh, recycling bin. Um, you know, the university and the department and General Motors and Chrysler and Apple and Google, all these companies are islands within which things are done as a matter of command um, by orders rather than by markets. Now, the Orthodox do recognize the firm though they don't like to talk about it. And the argument is that firms exist, and this goes back to Ronald Coase, um, a very interesting um, English economist. Ronald Coase wrote in 1937 in The Theory of the Firm that firms exist because using markets can be expensive. They're transactions costs. And the transactions costs, the cost of negotiation, the cost of setting prices, all you know, become expensive, so to avoid them, we just do things by command. Um, and some things are harder to do by command, so there we bear the cost of the transactions costs. So we don't tell consumers what to buy, we let them choose, and then we negotiate prices. But within the firm, we have things um, by command. And the boundary between the firm and the market is set by the extent of transactions costs. Higher transactions costs, bigger firms. So lower transactions costs, smaller firms. Um, now, this theory doesn't make a whole lot of sense. It sounds good, but there's a real problem with it. Take, for example, um, uh, Jonathan Papelbaum, pitcher for the Red Sox, throwing a ball to Jason Baratek who was catcher for the Red Sox for many years, and still is, sort of. Um, Papelbaum throws the ball 
Veritex throws it back. This is a firm. It's done by command. What are the transactions costs that would be involved? I mean, they'd have to negotiate how much is the ball worth. Well, how, mu how much, how difficult would that be to do? You do it once, you settle on the price, and then you just have to keep count of the number of times Veritech throws the ball back to Papelbon, or vice versa. The transactions costs aren't that great. There are a whole lot of activities done within firms that really don't involve a whole lot of negotiate, wouldn't involve a whole lot of negotiation. You could you know, come up with a price, maybe, you know, and then just go through with it. So why do we have firms if the, tr if the transactions costs aren't that great? Well, think about it. What would Veritex's position be if Papelbon throws him the ball? It's not the transactions cost. It's the holdup. At that point, Veritex holds the ball, the whole game, the whole team's waiting, and Veritex tosses the ball up in the air, catches it, and says, hmm, what's it worth to you? Veritex is in a position of great power. Firms, it's not transactions cost, it's power. Firms are about taking the power away from the workers and giving it to the bosses. When the workers are in a market situation with, within the firm, you know, the worker's standing there with his hand on the assembly line ready to turn it off. At that point, that work has a great deal of power. If you keep thing, if you do things through the market, which is the way a lot of manufacturing businesses actually were done well into the 20th century, you keep things in the market, you negotiate with workers, they're in a great position to hold you hostage, just like Veritech would holding that ball. And just like those workers would be holding this uh, the lever on the assembly line. Firms take that power away from the workers and give it to the bosses. It's not that firms are an island removed from the market. It's that firms are an island of capitalist power over workers. And that's what the command system within firms is all about. Okay, we'll pick up and talk some more about this next time. And have a nice day. Thank you. Bye-bye.